Radish is literally a radish that is a father. Just incredible. With literally millions of game titles out there in the world, it's understandable that many of them fly completely under the radar or simply fade out of popularity as technology advances and new games steal the limelight. This video is going to highlight four games that I absolutely adore, which I think don't get the recognition or appreciation they deserve. Loco Rocco. Sorry if I pronounced that wrong, that's how my brother and I used to say it all the time as kids and it's kind of stuck with me now. Loco Rocco is a unique platformer game developed by Japan Studio and published by Sony Computer Entertainment for the PlayStation Portable PSP. What a throwback that console is! Remember all the PSP exclusive games? Yeah, didn't think so. The PSP wasn't exactly a wild success for Sony. Moving on, Loco Roku was released in 2006 and was created by this guy. Sorry, I know I'm gonna get the name wrong, but he drew inspiration from a desire to create a simple, colorful, and cheerful game that could lift people's spirits. The game's development began as an experiment in physics-based gameplay and evolved from the idea of controlling a flexible, rolling character that could change shape and size, all driven by music and the world around it. Loco Rocco's art style was influenced by children's picture books and its design aimed to appeal to people of all ages. So, what is the aim of the game? So essentially you start out as one little lonely guy and you collect flowers throughout the level which make you multiply and hopefully everyone makes it to the end of the level. Some of these flowers might be in the open, some you might need to roll over certain parts of the map, maybe find some hidden walls or even go through some little nasty crevices. <laughs> Something I really love about this game is that all the levels are quite different to each other. Like there's tropical ones, there's ones with sand, in trees, in the snow, and even inside animals. Like you get pooped out at the end. I really liked the snow ones because it was so slippery and the animal ones like were bouncy. <laughs> you can also split up all the characters and then merge them back together. Sometimes it's handy to get into those little tiny crevices I was talking about. Oh yeah, and there's a lot of baddies out in the levels that will eat you. The most notable enemies are the Mudja Mudges. Also with each different scenery in the levels, there are different songs for them. They are so catchy. Such a bop. Play them on the radio. Fun facts about Loco Roco. Loco Roco was one of the first games to use a tilt based controls where the players tilt the entire world rather than directly controlling the characters. The game's creator initially conceived Loco Roco as a touchscreen game before adapting it to the PSP button controls. If you've ever played the game, you know it wouldn't have been as good if it was touchscreen. The Loco Roco characters sing in their own made up language. Again, it slaps. The game was critically acclaimed for its innovative use of sound, winning several awards, including the BAFTA for Best Audio Achievement. Clap, 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 clap. <laughs> Despite PSP not being all that popular, Loco Roco was one of the best selling PSP games on the market. I remember my brother and I used to pick up Loco Roco in the shops all the time and joke about getting it. And then on Christmas, we opened it and it changed our lives. 15 years later and I'm still talking about this game. This game was a childhood classic for me. Wholesome, charming, fun, can be enjoyed at any time by people of any age. If you're wanting to play the game, it's obviously on the PSP, but it's also on the PlayStation 5 store. So I highly recommend. Nintendo needs the rights so they can bring Loco Roco to the Switch. The Dog Island. The Dog Island is a life simulation adventure game developed by Ukes and published by Ubisoft for the PlayStation 2 and Wii in 2007. The game was created with the intent to appeal to a younger audience, offering a charming pet-centric experience that combined exploration, adventure, and light role-playing elements. Set on a beautiful island inhabited entirely by dogs, the game's story revolves around a young puppy who embarks on the journey to find a cure for their sick siblings. So when you start the game, you pick what breed you want to be, and I always went with the King Charles Cavalier. 
Just look at it, it's so cute. For a kid's game, it actually covers a lot of different topics. Of course, as always, they bring this item to a certain dog. But also, next thing you know, you're at a gravesite with the doctor talking about his dead girlfriend. There's sibling fights. There's also even a gang in this game that throw tomatoes at dogs. Don't worry, later in the game you turn out to be a good influence on them. Also, before starting the game, there would be this little theme song with all the dogs playing and being happy. For some reason, as a kid, I thought this was hilarious. Like, her voice is so high-pitched. But also, when you actually listen to the lyrics of the song, it's the complete opposite. <laughs> I'll get dressed by myself, so many tears are falling down. I always think of you and I. <laughs> Since this game was such a big influence on me, back when I was doing LPS videos, I actually was going to do a Dog Island series. I made the first episode, and then out of nowhere, I can't remember if the files got corrupted or just deleted off the computer, but I lost it, and I had no drive to make it again. <laughs> In my later years playing the game, when I was like 12, 13, I completed the game a couple times, but when I first got the game when I was like 8 or 9 years old, I barely scratched the surface of this game. So as like a nine year old, there was this one level where the sand was blowing everywhere so you couldn't really see anything. There were poisonous snakes. You could die any second. And I just couldn't get past it. I was so scared. Every time I'd be like, yeah, I'm gonna get past this mission. Not oh, you aren't. And then once I was a bit older and I actually did it, I'm like, oh, that was nothing. I'm glad I finally grew up and played the rest of the game. The story is just amazing. This game is also a lot of reading dialogue, so if you're not into that, this game probably isn't for you. I'm not trying to say the Dog Island taught me how to read. Also, in the hopes to try and find a cure for your younger six sibling, you come across this guy. Oh my god, I love this guy. Essentially, he's another guy from a planet and no other dogs can see him except for you. And it's really cute because the storylines kind of intertwine in the end. I don't know if anyone cares or would be interested in it, but oh my god, I would love to do like a gameplay sort of video on this. Fun facts about the Dog Island. The Dog Island features over 80 different dog breeds, each uniquely designed and modeled, allowing players to choose their favorite breed as their playable character. The game incorporates a sniffing mechanism where players use their sense of smell to find hidden items, treasure, and clues. The game's world is filled with various mini games and challenges, including fishing, digging, and racing, providing diverse activities beyond the main storyline. The Dog Island has a day-night cycle and dynamic weather changes, which affect gameplay by altering what characters and events are available at any given time. The game unfortunately wasn't widely marketed, so definitely flew under the radar, making it a hidden gem of its time. The soundtrack of the game was composed by Koji Sakurai and is known for its soothing, gentle melodies that complement the peaceful island setting. I can imagine myself being like 70 on a bus and still listening to the Dog Island soundtrack. <laughs> also, remember how I mentioned that little girl singing that song? Well, she actually sings songs in Loco Rocco as well. This was one of the first video games I ever owned on PS2, and it's another childhood classic that I will never forget. Dadish! This is a quirky platformer game created by the indie developer Thomas K. Young, released in 2020. And yes, Dadish is literally a radish that is a father. Just incredible. The game's development began as a personal project, with Young drawing inspiration from classic platformers like Super Mario and Donkey Kong Country, combined with his distinct sense of humor and minimalist art style. The concept centers around Daddish as he embarks on a journey to rescue his mischievous radish children who have wandered off. Normally, I want to skip through dialogue so I can get on with the gameplay, but not with this game. It's just so funny to me. Young's goal was to create a lighthearted yet engaging platformer that combined nostalgic gameplay mechanics with a fresh comedic twist. Honestly, I don't think there's much else I can talk about with Daddish. It is a great game to smash out in an afternoon or on a plane. I completed the whole thing when I was on a holiday. I don't want to spoil too much of the dialogue, but I would probably say this is one of my favorite interactions. Oh 
Oh, oh, Daddish. Classic Daddish. Fun facts about Daddish. Daddish was developed almost entirely by Thomas K. Young, who handled design, programming, art, and music, showcasing his multi-talented approach to indie game development. Daddish was initially released on mobile platforms, iOS, and Android, but later expanded to consoles and PC due to its growing popularity. I played it on the Switch. After the success of the first game, Young quickly developed and released sequels, including Daddish 2 and Daddish 3, which expanded on the original formula with new mechanics and characters. The success of the Daddish series has allowed Thomas K. Young to continue creating games independently, maintaining his unique voice and creative freedom within the indie game scene. Soul Bubbles Soul Bubbles is a puzzle platformer game developed by Mech and Sleep and released for the Nintendo DS in 2008. The game was designed by Olivier Lejade, who aimed to create a unique, tactile experience that took full advantage of the DS's touchscreen capabilities. The concept centers around a young shaman apprentice who must guide delicate bubbles containing lost souls to safety through various challenging environments. Despite being a relative low profile release, the game are artistic style, calming atmosphere, and intuitive mechanics garnered critical acclaim, earning it a reputation as one of the hidden gems of the Nintendo DS library. Like seriously, I found this game randomly in a bin at EB Games or somewhere like that with the price marked down to $10. Fun facts about Soul Bubbles! Each level contains collectible calabash items, which serve as optional challenges for players seeking to complete the game 100%. The game's visual style was inspired by a mix of tribal art and natural landscapes, contributing to its unique and serene aesthetic. Although not a mainstream hit, Soul Bubbles won the Best Handheld Game Award in the 2009 British Academy Games Awards. The game was often compared to other innovative DS titles like Kirby Canvas Curse for its creative use of the touch screen. So there you have it! Some cute video games that you may not be aware of. I highly recommend playing all of them if you can, but the easiest one to access is Daddish on the Nintendo eShop for the Switch. <laughs> PS2, PSP, and DS games are definitely a bit trickier today. Do you know any other games like these that should be added on the list? Catch you later, Wubbly Boys!